and worship. Amen. I had the praise team to go back with me in the olden days. Amen. Because that's where I mean I found my roots. Remember our team, the Huge Sunday is Bring a Friend Sunday, August 28th. So I know you guys got friends. If you don't, the Bible said in order to gain a friend, make yourself friendly. Stop being friendly and, and start calling people into your company. Is that good? Y'all got almost a whole month to do that. So Apostle, you you telling me to go out there? Absolutely. Amen. God will help you to keep all this stuff to yourself. Amen. Amen. Share with somebody else so they'll know the importance and the reality of serving God. Amen. As we move forward, we thank God our super seed is coming up. So, 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 so we go into we go into faith and ask what we want the Lord to do in us. Again, we talked about it in our morning glory, our desire, how we want to move forth in purchasing land and buildings, and we can do it if we come, collaboratively come together by faith. And so you go to God and ask God, Amen. What will your supersede be October thirteenth? Amen. And put a sign in there. Also, please don't forget our youth runway um, uh, fashion show. Amen. Our babies and others that would like to participate. This is a fundraiser for our, for this community. Amen. And what we're doing, we're asking different ones to bring who can. And don't, don't make it a burden or stretch. But if you can do it, do it. Um, donate um, footies, uh, personal items for the youth, uh, book bag, I mean, paper, pencil, whatever God put on your heart. And what we're going to do, we're going to wrap up and make care packages and distribute out in this community. Amen. That sound good? Amen. We just want to know we care. We just want to know we care. So that's going to be your admission. Bring that. In Jesus' name, we will have light refreshments, and we're going to see these babies model, show off their talent, youth on the runway. And that's August 30th, 7 o'clock here. August 30th, 7 o'clock here. You can go to our website. Amen. An event is on there, the open door, mke.net, and you'll see the event there. Also, women. Be made whole. I can't even see other I've been saying this over and over. <laughs> I see my sir. Okay, put my hat on. Okay. Women be made whole. Don't lose the excitement. Um, brunch 2024, September 28th. We got some amazing speakers and some activities that's going to be going on here at the open door, 10 a.m. So we're going to be turning this whole sanctuary around. Amen. It's going to be real, real pretty. Amen. That we be able to go forth and celebrate women in their time of healing. This is our first annual women's brunch. And it's going to be amazing. We got gifts, special gifts. So you can register again on the website, theopendoormke.net, theopendoormke.net. And the only reason why we put registration in is so we'll know how to prepare when it comes to food and, and um gifts and everything else. So please visit our website. Also to Neighborhood Cleanup September the 3rd 11 o'clock. So after that we would have a pizza party. Uh, one of the youth came to me and said are we having a neighborhood cleanup today? I said baby no, we'll be cleaning up most all day. We're going we're gonna to take our time and especially just do that. But I thank God for his dedication though. Amen. Amen. So I hope that's still that same dedication on September 3rd. And so we uh, we want our youth to go through the neighborhood, pick up the paper, just again show the neighborhood that we care. And then can we move forward? I know there's a lot on your plate that's on the website. An awesome event, community day. <laughs> Y'all, did our Barbara do an amazing job? Yes, he did. Yes, yes, he did. Yes, he did. I, 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 thank you, uh, Brother Malik, for um, he didn't want to get paid. He said to do it for the church. He, he was willing to cut hair for free to youth. Yeah. It was some adults came. I said, adults, you need to pay. <laughs> but the children, we he cut the children. did an amazing job. Yes, said, stood on his feet from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And so Saturday, I don't know if y'all know, doing hair, that's money day. Yeah, it is. And when you sacrifice money day yeah. to cut for free, yeah. that's real, real big. Yeah. So thank God for Pastor uh, Johnson put all that work yeah. in. Yeah. I used to be here of it, so I know it's a lot of work. Y'all, yeah. it felt good just to show up smiling. Yeah. I didn't have to say nothing. Oh, good, right? Amen. I said, Lord, the truth.
training is paying off. Thank you, Jesus. But next year, um, I will be assigning a team to Pastor Johnson. I thank God for her hard work. She don't complain. So um, I'm letting you know, openly, uh, Minister Teresa and Sister Teresa will be added to her team when it comes to Community Day. Amen? Amen. Yeah, you know, help with phone calls and reminding people of the event and, you know, donations and who want to donate. And that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. It is. And being yeah. here to receive the donations and everything. And I didn't have to do nothing. I don't know who donated or nothing. I feel really, really good, y'all. And so it, it pays and it feels good when you can teach and um, people execute it. Our next slide, please. Amen, amen. It's offering time.
God is through our sacrifice. And so um, we want to keep my daughter up in prayer on this coming Tuesday. Uh, she will be um, having a baby through cesarean, and this will be number 40th. Thirty-nine grandchildren and one grandchildren. Yeah, God has been good to us, y'all. And so, um, it's literally how we sacrifice our life before God. Amen. And so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sing this little bit of song after my voice. Amen. The next voice you will hear is Assistant Pastor Jessica White as she brings forth yes. the word. Amen.
That's the word on today, the light that you carry. Amen. So I'm going to start off in Matthew 5 and 15 through 16. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Matthew 5 and 15 through 16. Amen. And it reads, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Amen. So in that scripture, you know, what I got from it, we, we always supposed to have our light on so that we can encourage people to praise the Lord. Amen. And this bring me back to um, on my job. I always talk about my job. I just made 19 years amen. on my job. Amen. Amen. Some people be like, how do you do it? You, I mean, 35th, you know, I love it. You know, but I know what God told me when I was about to leave out of emotions. He said, be still. I need you to be that light in that location. And I said, Lord, I wasn't even thinking about your people. But amen, I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to be still. Well, amen, how many of y'all know that you're going to be tried when you carry the light? You're going to be tried when you carry that light. So the other day, I'm going to just say one thing real quick that, you know, tried to come up against me. It was a situation on my job. And my coworker, she get a text right, right here. You know, she's a witness because she look at me like, how do you do it? She's like, how do you do it? But amen. So the other day, it was a situation that happened. And my it was something with the new store director. And I had got... Anybody know everybody has a breaking point? Yes. Everybody has a breaking point, but you can't let that point break you. You cannot let it break you. So I was at a breaking point in a situation on my job, and um, I I got upset, and I had um, told the, the, the store director I wanted to go home, and he denied me to go home because I was very upset. Amen? So... He threatened me or whatever, and I still left. I did. But can I tell you, on my way home, you know, um, God, you know, he always speaks to me. He always corrects me. He always catches me in that moment because God had to remind me that remember your assignment that you have on your job. Remember your assignment. Don't allow your flesh, don't allow your emotions because the enemy is trying to run you off of your assignment because he knows that you are that light on your job. And that's not to toot my own horn. I give God all the glory. But I had to go through some things to even carry this light. A lot of people look at me and they see me and they don't even know the stuff that tries to come up against me because of the light that I carry. It's so important to have your ear. You carry the light because the enemy, he tries to come and snatch it away. So guess what I did? Okay. I had to obey God, get out of my little feelings. And I said, okay, God, you help me to go back in there. Because I'm going to be obedient. Now, I could have chose to just stay at home and not go yeah. back. Yeah. But then that would have been disobeying God. Because right. he told me to be still. And he told me what to do. So I said, okay, God, I'm going to go back. So I went back, and I clocked back in, amen. And I, all that, whatever I was feeling, when I went back, it was gone. Jesus. All of that, all the emotions were gone. I, I, it lifted off of me because I decided to remember my assignment and the life that I carry. It's not about me and my personal emotions. Because I did get emotional. But can you can I tell you that God will even set up a situation to where that manager will come back and repent to me? Because he was in the wrong. I was in the wrong for leaving. I was. You know, God gonna correct me. You was wrong for leaving. You should have left. You abandoned your job. You know, you can get fired for you know walking off on your job. Yeah, that's true. So I took accountability for my my part. I shouldn't have got that upset. Out of 19 years, I've never done that. I've never done that. My God. So I'm going to continue to go. So that was just one of the things, but it, 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 God released that off of me. And I had to remember my assignment. Amen. The light that we carry represents the presence of God. God is light, and there is no darkness in him. That is in the word of God. That is in the word of God. Amen. The light of God is offered to all of us. Yes. 
God offers this light to all of us, but it's up to us to receive the light. Jesus. We have the desire to want to carry the light. Jesus. Amen. I was offered to carry the light, but I felt like I wasn't ready. I kept saying, Lord, I ain't ready. I don't want to do that. I don't, you know, but I knew God was calling me and I kept playing with him and I kept ignoring him. And can I tell you, I always, I will forever tell this testimony because it saved my life. When I, when, one day, I mean, it was all on the news. I ended up getting shot in my leg. And I knew then when I was laying on that floor, I said, God, you trying to get my attention because I've been playing with you for too long. So on that floor, I made a decision. I said, God, I choose you. I'm done playing. I don't want to play no more with you. I don't want to keep playing. Serve two masters. I don't want to do that no more. Lord, I'm ready to carry the light. I'm ready to carry. I had to make a decision. It was a process, but I was. I had to. He was trying to get my attention because I was ignoring him. I didn't want to carry the light. Jesus. I didn't want to carry it. I didn't want it. And sometimes the enemy, he will come in to make you feel like I don't want to carry the light no more. My God, my God. my God. Amen. God is good. Y'all still with me on today? Amen. Amen. So God told me to, even in that moment, to stand up for myself on my job. You know, he had to remind me of my assignment. Amen. Carrying the light comes with obedience. It comes with honor. You have to have that honor, the discipline, the patience to endure, self-control and correction. We don't like that last part, correction. Yes. We don't like to be corrected. We don't like to, but that's how you grow. You cannot grow and carry the light without correction. Yes. Yes. We need correction. How will we know to get better? How will we grow without correction? Yes. My God, when you carry the light, this is this is a deep one right here, and I thank God for this. It says, when you carry the light, you will no longer wrestle with sinful strongholds hidden in the darkness. Oh. Because the light of the Lord exposes, bring forward, and free us from them. Yes. So I'm going to read that one more time. When you carry the light, you will no longer wrestle with sinful strongholds hidden in the darkness. Because the light of the Lord exposes, bring forward, and free us from them. Yes, my God. Lord, I thank you for that. Amen, amen. Your light, when you carry the light, your light is supposed to shift the atmosphere. Yes. When you carry the light, when you walk into the room, whether it's on your job or whatever, when you carry in that light, you shift the atmosphere. That's right. People that was depressed, people are supposed to, you know, get happy when you come around. Jesus. They supposed to, they, their attitude is supposed to change when you walk yes. walk into the room because you carry that light. Yes, yes. So yes. I've experienced that when I come and came on my job, you know, you know, my coworkers dealing with something. But when, when the light had walked in, that it switched the atmosphere and they was able to let it go. And that's the same thing for all of us that's in here. When you carry that light, remember that it's supposed to change and shift the atmosphere. Because one thing about me, I can't fake nothing. People will know when something is wrong. I can smile, I can laugh. Carry that light. People can feel when you, you know, something going on, even when you're smiling. Because there was a time where I was laughing one time. I'm like, hey, you know what? They're like, uh-uh, just what's going on with you? That my, my, my light didn't shift the atmosphere. They, they felt that. They said, no, nah, something ain't right. You smiling, but something is going on. And, and I'm like, okay, Lord, let me get it together. That's where I learned how to leave everything at the door. Because I know people can tell when something is going on with me. I can't fake it. The light that you carry, you can't fake it. You can't fake it. My God. Amen. Carrying the light comes with affliction with people. Yeah, it's going to get quiet on this. My God. Carrying the light irritates and it triggers people. Carrying the light, people, I used to wonder, why don't they like me? Why are they always fighting up against me? Why do I always go through this with people? But it's because that light irritates them. They get so angry with me. I've had people feel like they wanted to fight me. For what? I was. So, I used to be so confused. Why? Lord, I love on your people. You know, I'm honest with them. I show up. You know, I said, Lord, why are they doing me like this? But he revealed to me it's the light that you carry. It irritates them. It makes them mad. It's been time I've had women blow up on me, and I'm like, whoa, where did this come from? But now I know what it is. Amen. It's the light. 
It's the light that triggers and irritates people. They try to push your button to get a reaction out of you, to try to get you out the character of God. They want to see if is your light real. That light that you carry, let me see if that's real. So they try to pick with you and say things and, you know, do this and do that because they want to break your character of God. They want to break it. And I said, no, I'm not going to allow, it's been many of situations that try to break my character because I love people. And I said, no, God, I'm not, no, I'm not going to allow these people to make them feel better. Because when you break out of character, it makes them feel better. They're like, oh, okay, so you ain't who you say you is. Because they wanted that reaction and you gave it to them. That's why even with my manager, I didn't give him that reaction. I didn't run my mouth and talk crazy to him. I said, I need to go home. Because he, sometimes, you know, they will even try to get a, a, a reaction out of you. Manager, they try to get a reaction. Because, you know, they may try to be get, trying to get rid of you. You never know what their, you know, thing is. But I could have broke the character of God and I could have went in on him. But I decided to remember when I came back my assignment and the attack that it was. Because people think it's impossible to really carry the light and, you know, really live for God. They think it's impossible. They think it's fate. But if you be that light and show others in this world, because that's what we are supposed to do, people sometimes want to see evidence. They want to see if it works. They want to hear the testimonies of this God that you are talking about. They want to hear the testimonies of the light that you carry. Amen? Amen. It's not, it's not, it's not you. It's the light that you carry. Amen. Amen. Some people get close to you for hidden agendas to turn your light completely off. I've had people get close to me to try to turn my light off, to try to kill my light. When I say drag my name into the ground, stuck on it, spit on it, trying to put out my light. And God always reveal to me what people say so it will get back to me and I'm like, Lord, keep me in the character of you. Yeah. Because this person is really trying to turn my life off. Yeah. Yeah. She is, she, she's really trying to turn my life off. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I have to keep standing and remember my assignment and continue to carry the light. Yeah. You ain't gonna turn my light off. I didn't be, I worked way too hard to get to this point. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not gonna allow nobody to turn my light off. Gonna carry this into the day I leave here. Because God been too good to me. He had healed me and delivered me and set me free. Why would I allow anybody to turn my light off? Yes. I can't, I won't do it. I'm not gonna do it. You can try all you want to, but it's not gonna work. I remember I used to let people switch my light off. They used to get to me, I was so emotional and what they they did in the past, but as I continue to grow in the Lord and know who He is. I began to get stronger and stronger. Can't nobody turn that switch off. Amen. 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 Your, um, sometimes your light will allow people, it, it, it will make people reflect on their life. On their life. Yes. It'll make them reflect Talk to us. on their life. And yes. they, when they look at you, they're like, wow, I used to be there. I used to have that light. What happened to my life? You know, it, it, that's what, that's the reaction that we want. We want people to look at us that, that carries this light to actually have people reflect on their life. I want that back. Be that light to have people want their lights back. We have to be that example. Amen? Amen. The, the light, this is a good one that God gave me. The light never fights with the darkness. The darkness cannot comprehend the light. My God, my God. I'm going to say that again. The light never fights with the darkness. The darkness cannot comprehend the light. My God, I'm going to go way back growing up. You know, when it comes to, you know, I'm going to just be real having roaches. Amen. When, you, when the light is off, you know, all roaches come out. But when that light gets turned on, what they do? They scatter. They scatter. They run. They run and they, they understand that when the light shows up, they got to scatter. Yeah. And that's how we are to walk in this walk with God. When we walk in the room, the darkness is supposed to scatter. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to scatter when you be that light. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
good. It was funny when God gave me that illustration, you know, of the roaches. I said, <laughs> I said, that's true, Lord. The roaches do run when you turn that light on. They scatter, and it'd be, it be plenty of them, too. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. I ain't no all bougie and ashamed to tell my story. Amen. We used to have. Amen. But look at God now. Hallelujah. Amen. So, <laughs> so I'm going to go on to the next scripture in Acts 13 and 47 through 49. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads, for the Lord gave us this command when he said, I have made you a light to the Gentiles to bring, to bring salvation to the farthest corner of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were very glad and thanked the Lord for his message. And all who were chosen for eternal life became believers. So the Lord's message spread throughout the region. So, amen. We, this God gave, once God converted me and he commanded me to be that light to others and to disciple our apostle, even teaching on being a disciple to others, how when we are disciple, we are supposed to disciple others. Amen. So when God converted me, I made, I, I, I had to honor the word, and it's supposed to be like a domino effect. You know, when God brings you out, we're supposed to go out and bring somebody else out. It's supposed to be a chain reaction. That's it, Amen. The light is supposed to spread. It's supposed to spread when it comes to carrying that light and bringing somebody else out. Amen. 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 And, and some some of you all may say, you know, right now, maybe you're thinking, you know, I was starting to get my life back, but something came up that threw me off focus. You know, when, when the enemy knows that you on your way to get your life back, he's going to send any and every attack to get you not to get to that point where your light comes back on. He's going to fight you. But I'm here to tell you, if you continue to fight and continue to be consistent, you will get your life back. Yeah. You will get it back. Yeah. You will get continue yeah. to stay focused, continue to show up to hear the word of God, continue to read his word, continue to pray, because it is a process. Yeah. Amen. But if you fight, you're going to win with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I'm going to just go through some um, examples of things that dim your life. Amen. I have seven examples. Number one, we've been talking about let it let let it go, letting things go, um, and being free from things. So I'm gonna just give a few examples of things that dim your life. Number one is holding on to the past. When you hold on to the past, that dims your life. And you may say, well, it's hard to let it go. Look what you're speaking. If you speaking, it's hard to let it go. You giving it life. You give it like constantly talking about it's hard. And some people say it's easier said than done. But I say it's not going to get easier until you get it done. Oh, it's not. Amen. 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 So number two is beating yourself up when you make a mistake. A lot of times we beat ourselves up when we, you know, on the right path and we, we was doing good. And then we slip up and we beat ourselves up yeah. when we make mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. Get back up and remember what are what you're fighting for. You're fighting for that light. Amen. So it's okay. Mistakes are gonna happen, but don't beat yourself up. That damns your light. Number three is give it into sin. Mm. That damns your light. Yeah. Because I've learned about uh, when it comes to you know things that you want that's not of God. You only want it because you can't have it. But then when you get it, you be like that wasn't even worth it. It wasn't worth it. So that dims your life. Number four is the negative words you speak. I just talked about that already. That dims your life. Number five is being around evil communication that corrupt your good manners. You got to be careful who you around. That's right. You know, I mean, you could be like, I, I, I've heard people and I've, even in my walk, you know, um, being around people that's talking about the things that you're trying to get away from. Woo! That conversation will draw you back in. It will. Evil communication corrupts good manners. Because I found myself when I was trying to stop drinking, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop drinking and this and that. But I, when I went around people that was drinking, they made it look fun and again, and, you know, they was convincing me. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I'm, I'm trying to get right with God. But guess what? They convinced me to take that drink. 
And I said, and then when I did it, I just was like, that wasn't even worth it. Yes, Lord. It wasn't worth it at all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So you got to be careful who you connected with, who are you talking to. Yes, Amen. Lord. Number six is disconnecting from God. That damns your life. You know, we go through things and things hit our life and we just completely disconnect from God. I want to encourage somebody on today, connect back with God on today. That's it. That's it. His arms are still stretched out for you. Connect back with God. Amen, amen. And number seven, the last one, is feeling like the light is too heavy to carry. Wow. That dims your light. Amen. When you feel like this is too much, Lord, I can't, it's too heavy. I keep going through this, I keep going through that. What is the point of, of even serving? But I'm here to tell you, it's worth it. Yes, it is. Because we have an end and we want to get to glory. We want to see our Father. We want to yes. see our King. Yes. So it's worth carrying. It's worth carrying. It's yes. worth carrying. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I'm going to close out with a scripture and a demonstration because I'm a, a visual teacher. Yes. And I always give, you know, a demonstration of what I'm teaching about. I normally have it on the screen, but I'm going to do an in-person demonstration. And as he prepares that, um, God gave me this demonstration of a lamp. And as he gave it to me, I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do with this lamp? I said, give it to me. What you want me to say, Lord? Amen, amen. amen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this lamp. Now you gotta put all that together for her. That's why I had it. So amen. All right, all right. So this lamp right here, this part, you see it's naked, it has nothing on it. It has nothing on it. This represents us. This lamp right here. This represents us. Amen. And this light bulb represents our process, our deliverance. And as I'm twisting it. You know, God is, this is God working on you and delivering you. And it's study twisting because you're doing the work. And as you continue to allow God to work on you through those layers and layers, the, the light bulb is constantly turning. Yeah. It's constantly turning when you get the process. you got to remember it's a process. Yeah. And in order for me to turn this, i got to do the work by twisting it. Yeah. So when you allow God to start working on you, and you stay in the process, your light bulb will begin to turn. Amen, amen. And then when you get through your process to fight for your light back, then your light comes on. Yes. Then your light comes on. Mm. And this is the light that I'm talking about on today. Oh, yeah. Amen. God is living. Y'all catch that. Yeah. Y'all catch that. Yeah. Amen. And then. <laughs> amen, amen. So now when you get your life back, you need something called a protection, and that's your whole armor. You gotta put your whole armor on when it comes to protecting your life. When God gives you your life back, you have to allow God to protect it, and that's putting on your full armor of God. It has to protect your life, the armor of God. Amen, and then as I close out with a scripture and just twisting this on, this secures it so it won't come off. And this is the armor of God, God's protection. Amen. He is protecting your life. I allow God to protect my life every day. I have to because the enemy wants to take it so bad. He want to take it so bad, but he ain't going to get it because I got that protection. I got that protection. I'm covered by the blood. I'm covered. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to close out with this scripture. That was just a demonstration. And I'm going to read in Ephesians 5 and 8 through 14, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. And it says, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light, for this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil in darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. The light exposes what the talk is in secret, the things that are done in secret. You know, the light exposes that. That's what the Word of God says. That's why I love the Word of God, because you can't argue against it. Yeah, you can't. You can't. can't argue against it. Amen. Amen. 
but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it, said, it is said, awake, O sleeper, rise up from the deep, and Christ will give you light. Yes, Amen. God. Let's give God a hand clap. Today. Amen. I'm going to make an altar call. If anybody feel like, you know, I need my light back, you know, I, I, I've been, you know, fighting with it. I need my light back. You can come forward at this time if you need prayer to get your light back. To get your, if you want to give your life back to Christ, amen, you can come at this time. Or if you need prayer for anything, the altar is open for prayer.